Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to be talking about something that I feel like we should have addressed running directly into the intermediate phases of your work. Today, we're going to be talking about throwing with consistency. Here's the general story with most potters and ceramicists. As soon as you get out of your beginning phases, you start getting a little bit better at your craft. You start taking commissions. Sooner or later, someone asks you to make a set of something, multiples of something. Whether it be bowls or cups or bottles or plates, you're going to have to throw two if not more of the same type of something with the same exact size, if not the ability to nest into each other. And this is where throwing with consistency comes in handy. I also have multiple tips and tricks on throwing with consistency that I've learned myself throughout the years, but I have so many of them that I think I'm going to have to split this video into two or three multiple parts because that would be like a 30 or 40 minute long video. But today we're going to specifically be talking about throwing with consistency with aspects to Wayne your clay. Weighing your clay is a vital part of throwing with consistency. To be able to work with the same amount of clay, with the same amount of hand motions, to produce the same shape over and over again in a productionist-like style. In fact, I just did an order for a place called Tea Cozy in Sacramento, California that ordered 50 teacups, and you bet they all had to be around the same exact size. And the first step into throwing successfully or consistently, especially when you're making a large body of stuff, is to weigh out your clay. Now you are going to need a scale in order to do this, but a little potter tip here, don't go ahead and get yourself a person's scale in which you would weigh yourself. Grab yourself a food scale. This is a little food scale I use for tracking calories at times whenever I feel really insecure about myself because I'm American and I have tum tum fat problems. A little potter tip here, sometimes I say buy yourself a scale and some people think to buy yourself nope. a fully sized person scale. You don't have to do that. You can very easily buy yourself a food scale. And a secondary potter tip, buy yourself the cheapest one possible. You are going to get clay, you are going to get dust, you are going to get silica on the inside of the components of this thing because you will be weighing clay on the top of it. It will come in contact with this piece of machinery. And because of that, you don't wanna buy a super high-end one that's gonna go out of use in a couple years. So buy yourself the cheapest one possible that takes one or two batteries or maybe a dinky little rechargeable one, but don't sprint for an extra expensive one. The only real difficult part in weighing your clay is to discern what you're gonna be throwing and what weight it needs to be before you actually weigh your clay body. For example, I know that my regular size teacups take about 14 to 15 ounces. So I cut off that amount, and I'm gonna do this over and over and over again. The neat thing about weighing your clay out is if you get a different shape every single time you weigh your clay, you're gonna understand that there was something wrong with the user. Something was wrong with your hand movements. If you get a big teacup out of 13 ounces, and you get a small teacup out of 13 ounces, that means it wasn't the clay. Nothing's wrong with the clay, unless you didn't wedge it properly, you didn't get everything cohesive and nice. That means that you did something with your hand movements that was not standard. And that goes into the second tip with weighing your clay body. Once you figure out how much clay you want for what size of what you need to be making, this means you need to decide exactly how many hand movements and what you need to be doing in order to get the shape that you want out of it and repeat that shape over and over and over again. Granted, this does come with practice in order for you to develop the muscle memory necessary for you to make the same shape over and over and over again. But when you weigh out all of your clay to be a specific weight, this means that that standard is no longer a variable. I remember when I was super new, I would essentially get two pieces of clay, weigh them both together, wedge them pretty well, and go, look, I, I, don't, I don't know what size of what thing I'm making, but I do know that whatever this ball of clay comes out to be, regardless of its weight, I'm gonna cut this thing in half, and it is going to be 50-50. Boom. This was essentially the trick that I did before I weighed a bag of clay. I would just be like, well, I'm gonna make a set of something, and I don't know how big they're gonna be, but I know that this is 50-50, so these must, be, <laughs> these must be around the same size. The second tip that I can give you is that once you weigh out your clay body, this means that any hand movements that you make have to be rather concise. If you're trying to make one specific shape, over and over again, other than weighing out your clay body, you need to figure out how many hand movements and what hand movement you're making in order to make that shape. This usually comes when you pre-discern what you'll be making before you actually weigh out your clay body. So for example, you sit down and you say, I'm going to be making five mugs. You want to weigh out your clay body and then decide how many movements it takes in order to make that mug and replicate that movement over and over again. And now 
now for the second piece of clay that we also weighed out. And the real test is to put it right next to the previous piece we threw and see if it matches up perfectly with the same size, same diameter, and same weight. And look at that, they're near identical. This is because number one, we weighed our clay bodies out to make this set of teacups. And number two, we made sure that our hand movements were nice and concise. This means no extra fussing, no extra learning what we're doing on the way there. We coned up, coned down, opened the well, pulled once, took us less than a minute, and now we have a product that matches the previous one that we just threw. Potter tip. A very simple but huge potter tip here. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. I am 100% one of those people who goes, ah, I don't have to worry about it. I'll remember how big and how heavy and the diameter and the height and the width and like what the weight was of the clay I was using for this commission. I don't need to do any of that, but no, none of us are that. So if I were to give you one standardized tip, it would be to write down whatever the standard is for what you're making. Once you figure out what standard you wanna do for set commissions and what size and what color and XYZ and XYZ, you're gonna want some type of place to write down those standards. Otherwise, you're either gonna get repeat customers who want the same thing they bought before in a larger volume, or you're gonna get people who see an item that you did a commission for another person for, and they're gonna want that item in turn. You're going to need a place to write down the information of how you made that item, of what clay body, the weight, the width, and the height at least. Trust me on this, I used to be the kind of person who didn't do this, and I'm telling you to because I've already suffered enough damage at the hands of past Dante, who didn't want to do this. Please write down the standards of whatever you plan on making for people or offering as commissions or body of work. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. You know, the real message of this video is to get yourself a tiny little scale, preferably a food scale that you can get dirty and ruined because they get ruined through dust and silica and clay, and weigh out your clay body beforehand. If I were to give anyone watching this video a little bit of homework, even if you don't plan on doing any types of commissions or standard work in the future, I would say get a small scale and weigh out your clay body just to see how much clay you're using. Maybe it's a little too much, maybe it's a little bit too small. This way you can learn to control the amount of clay you're using to save yourself a bit of clay and money in the future, and it doesn't hurt to have this backup scale just in case someone wants a commission from you and you need to throw with consistency thus weighing out your clay body in the future. And there you go, you already got the equipment. Remember to hit all the YouTube buttons, good luck on your next kiln load, and I will see you dirty potters next week. Thank you for your patronage. This is actually a fresh notebook with nothing written in it, um, because the other one that I actually write my measurements in have a bunch of, uh, just as like Dante's big honky tonk but donk a donk and there's a little pot drawn next to it. I don't call the pots what they're supposed to be called. I'd be naming them weird stuff.